Hi everybody, I'm Catherine Rule, and today is day 10 of Vlogmas. Thank you so much for watching and today I'm going to be doing hibiscus dyeing. Hibiscus dyeing is a natural dyeing process and it looks like this once it's all done. It's like a dusty purple color and I'm using dried hibiscus that I found at the grocery store. It's pretty easy to find and it's a very fun, easy, safe project to do in your kitchen. I'm doing Vlogmas this year, which is every day I'm, during December, I am uploading a new video that has to do with dyeing or a holiday craft or a holiday activity. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more Vlogmas videos. Thank you so much for watching and let's get started. Hi everybody. Today I'm gonna to be doing some hibiscus dyeing. Uh, this is natural dyeing and I did a few test strips that turned out really nice. It's kind of like a plummy, purpley color. These are linen, um, so the linen took it pretty well. Uh, I didn't do any cotton. I would imagine the cotton would also take the color, but probably be a little lighter. Um, so anyway, I'm going to try to recreate this or even maybe a little darker today. And what I'm gonna use are these hibiscus flowers. I just got these at the grocery store. Um, they're dried hibiscus flowers. You can see what they look like. Um, I got this idea because there's like this donut store in Brooklyn called Dough that um, has like a really famous hibiscus donut. And it's like, bright pink and it's really, really striking. Um, so you can also make tea out of this, which is kind of fun. Um, anyway, so they're at the grocery store, they're really cheap and easy to find here at least. And I'm going to use some linen and I have a vintage sort of like handkerchief thing. It has a stain on it. So I don't know exactly what this is, but I think it feels kind of like linen. Um, it might be cotton too. Anyway, I'm just gonna experiment. I think it will be cool. It has this pretty sort of jacquard white on white pattern that will probably kind of come out more when it's dyed. So I'm gonna play around with that. So I'm going to be using these acrylic pieces. Um, I just washed them all. I've used them for indigo a lot. Um, but I wanted to get all the indigo off of them. So I just washed them with water and an, uh, a magic eraser. And I think I got most of the indigo off. There's like a few pieces that have a little bit on it, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to use these to do my pieces for hibiscus and I'm going to um, clamp them with, um, I'm gonna use Try using these bulldog clips. Um, I also have clamps that I really like, but they have indigo on them and it just, they're so like detailed that getting all the indigo off of them is kind of um, like a nightmare. So I'm just gonna keep those for indigo and probably get new clamps to do natural dyeing with. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna try using my bulldog clips. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure everything is ironed and I'm just gonna start folding. Of course, you have to do accordion folding for any shibori. If you've seen any of my other tutorials, um, I talk a lot about accordion folding. So we're gonna do accordion folding for this piece and pressing it in between each fold. And then I'm going to accordion fold it in an equilateral triangle. So I'm just going to keep folding and pressing and anything that you do with an equilateral triangle usually turns out kind of like a flower pattern. It's going to have six petals or six elements that go around in a circle. So it's one of my favorite folds and you can do so much with it from rubber bands to itajimi molds and different shape molds. You don't have to always use a triangle. So it's a really great fold. And I'm going to use my acrylic molds here. And it's too thick to use a bulldog clip, so I'm gonna use rubber bands. But if you're gonna use rubber bands, be very careful because this actually 
bent the acrylic pieces due to the heat because we're going to put them in a he heated vat. Um, I can still use them, but they're a little bit bent. So anyway, just be careful. The clamps are much better. This is a um, pillowcase that I made uh, previously. It's 100% it's cotton and I'm just going to turn it right side out and then accordion fold it into a long skinny rectangle and I'm just going to continue folding it into a rectangle all the way up working my way through one side and then to the other side and then I'm going to turn it over and follow suit on the other side. I've been having a lot of fun with Vlogmas. Thanks for everyone for tuning in. Um, it's been a really great creative challenge for me. I've been producing a lot of videos and I have a lot of ideas and it's really exciting. So um, I hope you can get a chance to check out some of my other videos. I'm doing like a combination of holiday activities and dying, which is really more of my usual videos and content. So anyway, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who's commenting and liking. It really um, keeps me going because it is a lot of work, <laughs> um, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. So what I'm going to do on this one is a lot of little uh, clamps and little molds. So this is going to give me like different stripes basically of these shapes. And um, the kit has a whole variety of bigger shapes and smaller shapes. So it's kind of fun to play with the smaller shapes um, and do like rows of them. And I'm just going to adjust them as needed so that they can all fit on this rectangle. And this is a double piece of fabric because it's a pillow, right? So it has a right set, um, a front face and a back. So it's extra thick. Um, so whatever you're dyeing, just keep in mind for how thick it is. So if you can't fit it all in one, you can do this method of doing the stripes. And last but not least, I'm going to do a piece of linen. Of course, I have to do some linen. I'm just going to fold it up accordion style and give it some steam. And I'm going to fold it into sort of smaller, a smaller rectangle. And just keep going. I've been having a lot of fun with natural dyes. Um, they're a lot different from indigo. Indigo is a whole process with um, oxidation and all that stuff. And these natural dyes that I've been doing, I did one with onion and um, been playing around with some other things, make it, it's just a little bit easier and it's more of a, a longer process and it's, you know, it involves heat. So it's just been a really fun um, experiment for me and I'm, I really enjoy it and it's just so fun to see how things turn out. So this mold here is a square with a circle cut out, which is kind of cool. And I'm going to give it a double clamp on this one just because I uh, want it to be extra clamped. There we go. That one fits. I had to kind of scrounge around for clamps. There they are. They're ready to go into the vat. So I'm mixing up some water and salt and making sure it's dissolved and I'm going to soak my fabric in the salt bath. I used about six cups of water and a cup and a half of salt. Um, so it's pretty salty and I'm just going to let them soak for about an hour or two to get the fabric ready to take the dye. So I'll set those aside and in a separate pot I'm going to add water and the hibiscus flowers. I'm going to put them on low and let the color start to come out. You can see how colorful these flowers are it's starting to already come out. I don't want it to boil, I just want it to be simmering. So I'm putting it on low on my little hot plate here and I'm gonna let it sit and let the color start to come out. Here it's been sitting for probably about an hour and you can see it's like steamy but it's not boiling. 
I'm also going to add the leftover dye I have made for the swatches. I kept it in the fridge and I'm just going to pour it in to add a little punch to this dye vat. So here I'm going to add the fabric and I'm going to keep the salt water on the side for later, which I'm going to add into the dye bath. So I'm just going to put the fabric in and make sure it's nice and submerged and stir it up. I'm going to leave the flowers in the dye vat just because this, I don't care if it's a perfectly smooth dye job because it's like Itajimi Shibori and stuff. And I think it kind of adds some character, but you can see already it's getting some color and those templates are really providing a really strong resist. Here it's been soaking for a few hours and uh, you can see there is some resist on the inside of those templates. I'm going to take them out. I kind of let it cool for a little bit, so don't get, put your hands in if it's hot, <laughs> obviously. And I'm just wringing everything out and I'm going to set it aside. Now this one got a little bit bent, like I was saying, so be careful if you're using these acrylic templates. I would use clamps instead of rubber bands. That was a mistake that I made, so don't make it yourself. Here I'm unwrapping them. This color is amazing when it first comes out. It's like so brilliant. It's going to darken and lighten when it dries, but it's just so pretty when it comes out. Here I'm unwrapping the triangle one. Here I see it's kind of bent there, but that's okay. This is the handkerchief and it turned out kind of like a flower with the petals. I love that pattern so much. It's so pretty. And I'm going to set these aside and be careful not to let them overlap because the hibiscus can stain the white parts of the fabric. Um, so be careful. It's very potent when it's wet. Oh, I have a little indigo there. I don't know where that came from. My studio has a lot of indigo in it, so um, it's just kind of the reality of dyeing. I rinsed that off and it came out um, fine, so I didn't have to stress out about that, but just be careful to be working in a clean environment, as clean as you can. And as you can see, one of the things fell off in the bucket, so so I rinsed everything and let them dry, and this is how they look afterwards. This one I think maybe has a little bit of poly in it because um, it's a little lighter than the other ones, but it turned out really pretty. I love the pattern on it, and I am going to iron everything and heat set it. That's like another added way to set the color is to use heat so I use an iron and just really on high just like get it hot 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 here is the pillow with the stripe that I think turned out really cute I love this idea of uh, like organic stripes on things and one of the things fell off as you can see so it didn't get um, that four stripe, but I think there's something kind of cool about threes. So I like the way it turned out. It's sort of like a happy accident. I am linking all of my supplies that I used in the description below. So you can check those out if you're looking to get some dyeing supplies. And thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for next time. So that concludes today's dyeing tutorial with hibiscus. Thank you so much for watching and go ahead and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more Vlogmas and dyeing tutorials. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.